Shut up and sit down. This Friday's video, Fuel Friday, is uh, repacking and re-sleeving a silencer that we've got back from a customer who's had it for about three years, never repacked it. Um, it's one of our old silencers that we used, to, we used to use powder coating. We no longer use powder coating for the reason you're going to see here. On this powder coated sleeve, you can see here where the powder coating has melted. Now, this isn't something that uh, usually happens, but if you listen to the silencer, we've got an echoing sound. This is a, a fresh silencer. So you can hear the difference there. Basically what's happened with this, the packing has completely disappeared. Uh, it's gone through the holes in the baffle tube. It's burnt out, the replaceable things. So the serviceable items, so this has to be done. So what we can do is on our silencer what we need to do is take it apart we do a kit form which we supply a drill the packing material uh, we just don't supply any of the tools to do it another important thing about um, repacking a can is when we do when we sell db killers the db killer to be effective has to have the packing has to be in good condition there is no point buying a db killer with a an exhaust a can with with its packing material damaged or missing because it's not going to silence it so be aware that when you buy a db killer the two go together the packing has to be in good good order for the db killer to work okay i'll just go and get some glasses Okay. So what you'll see me do here, this is how I drill my caps. What I do is I drill into the rivets, but what happens to a rivet? The rivet starts to spin. So what I do is I turn my drill side to side, uh, not for any other reason, just to stop the drill, the rivet from spinning. What I do is I keep hold of the rivet strap as well. Okay. Now, to get the end cap out, the easiest way to do this is to leave the DB killer fitted. And we use the DB killer as our drift. We put it onto a bar and we'll push it out. So there we have our cap with DB killer fitted. And when we look inside, if we look inside there, you can see there's hardly any packing material left. Hardly anything left in here. Very, very little. In fact, virtually nothing. We've got a few strands. That's, oh, there is some more in the bottom. There we go. And that's it. So with this particular can, because obviously the sleeve is now damaged, uh, one of the reasons why we move to ceramic coatings is so that this doesn't happen. Um, ceramic coatings uh, withstand a, a lot higher temperature, a lot better finish, uh, and we just find that they, they, they look better, they perform better, and that's why we use them. Okay, so now I'm going to drill this end and we're going to remove the sleeve. Same operation, drill into the rivets using hard pressure with a slight side to side movement when the, when the rivet starts to move or spin. OK, 
keeping hold of the rivet band there. We'll empty these in here and all I'm going to do now is I will use this to drift. I just use a rubber mallet now to drift the out drift that out of there okay so now we're left with the internal and the end cap now what we do with these is because we're doing a refurb here um, what we can do is um, obviously here we have polished we've got polished finish on the caps so and we'll just remove that clamp as well what we're going to do is take it over to the blaster because the customers asked if we could well we've we've offered it to the customer if he, if he, if he'd like it uh, media blasting which is a, a really nice finish uh, seeing as he's, he's, he's an ex-customer we're doing it for uh, free of charge okay we'll bring it into there So here we now have our new ceramic black tube um, if you look at the difference between the two finishes I'm sure you'll agree that uh, that the ceramic wood looks a lot better so what we'll do is now what we need to do is to make sure that I know where these holes are already drilled rather than drilling the same holes again and having a load of holes peppered in the cap what I'm going to do is just put a mark a small mark where the holes already are so I, now I know in the cap where the holes are on the inlet should I say and then we'll do the same here on the outlet so I know exactly where those holes are in respect to the rivet, rivet band okay so just put a little bit of sealant on the inside of the inlet just helps it seal any air gaps pop this what we'll do is we'll pop this onto here go over to here and just tap it in clean any of the old any of the dirty gubbins off from the any old residue sometimes we it shaves a bit off the cap 
Okay. So I'll just double check something here. Just want this to make sure that that's correct. We also need some packing now, but what we do is I use a layer of wire wool on the inside of our usual packing material. So it has a double layer, so it's, it's protected because obviously there's high, high frequencies, uh, vibration all going through the center of the baffle tube and the stainless steel wire wool prevents it or tries its best to prevent it from breaking down and damaging this material and we found the stainless steel to be the most effective. It's a very special way of measuring this. So I know exactly how long that is and go for a cut here. Now, what I do here is I'm going to roll till I've got a double thickness and a spin, keeping it tight as I wind it round the tube. And I should be have a nice tight stainless steel wool packing round there. Lay that onto the inside of this packing. You can do this around a cardboard tube, uh, roughly the same size, or obviously to slip over the baffle tube. Keep sliding it down, sliding it out, tuck it in. Okay. The next stage is to line up the outlet cap because obviously we want it to be lined up and for that I use a mirror. So we'll just grab this makeshift mirror just to help me line the cap up. So, just a slight turn in there, and I think we're about there. Okay, now we're going to line the centre tube. We're aligning that centre tube at the same time. So on here, I'm going to be tapping this down. I wouldn't normally be tapping it on here. This is just so that I can show you what I'm trying to show. A couple of different camera angles of how, how I do it. Okay. So now we can see where I've got my points on here around the, around the side of this tube, uh, sorry, end cap. So around the end cap I've got lines to line up with my holes in my rivet bands. And here I have some rivet bands that I already have made. These are already um, blasted. So what I'm going to do is just grab my drill. I'm just going to change my drill over. Have a look. Okay. So line my first one up. seem to have got it straight away there. So we hit that straight 
with that first one. And then we've got our second one, which is also one I made earlier. Again, looking on the end of the cap where I previously made my marks. So it's easier to line up. Drill's getting a little bit stuck there. Okay, now we're lined up. Lovely. So now, this is just the way I do it. I have some clamps that I clamp around the outside of the tube uh, just to pull my rivet bands up. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary to do this. It's just because all the holes are pre-drilled, you'll find that they, they will find their own way in. I just like to secure this as I'm going along, uh, which I will just... Just looking for something here. So there. There we go, and I'm just checking the alignment of the strap around the outside of the can and around here just to make sure it's in the right place. And now I'll just drill a series of holes straight through. These are quite easy to do because obviously I've already drilled into the cap previously so that's not a problem there okay it's always handy to have a, a pneumatic air riveter but you can do it uh, with a manual one obviously the, it just takes a little bit more time and you've got to be careful not to damage the exhaust when you, when the rivet pulls up pulls out. Okay, so last one here. So I'll just drive the last one through. Also, what I'm doing here is making sure none of the swarf goes in underneath the rivet band because we don't want swarf going underneath there, then closing this up, riveting it, and you'll see a load of swarf and it'll make a right mess and it'll just look like a second class job. Last two rivets through there. Lovely. And what I also do is tap the edges of the rivet bands down just so they're not sharp. Next is we'll get a new label to put on there. So the trick is to trick is for these labels is not to touch any of the, the backing if you can as little as possible, pull that off, chuck that away, place this, try and get it on right first time, work from the middle outwards. Super. And there we have our can. All we need to do now is just wipe off our marks. So 
So any of the marks that we've left on here, which are obviously the uh, the pen marks just from my indelible marker, try and get rid of those. The other great thing about this ceramic coating is I can use thinners, I'm not going to go over the badge, but I can use thinners on this and it doesn't touch the, the material at all. There's no paint that comes off or anything like that, it just evaporates, it's really really good. So we'll just go over with another clean cloth, buff this off, and there is our refurbished silencer. So rather than being polished now or powder coated, we have the blasted ends like so. So there's our finished silencer. Repacked and ready to go. Okay. Any, all of the parts in this video are pretty much all available from our website. In our repacking kit, we supply the rivets, a drill and the packing material. But if you're repacking, you should be repacking roughly Anything over 10,000 miles should really be done. We have exhausts out there that have lasted for 20 years and haven't been repacked. And some of them, when we take them apart, the packing is absolutely perfect. So it, did, it all depends on the style of the machine, the, the makeup, whether it's a V-twin, a single, an inline four, a triple, whatever it may be, they all perform differently and they all, all the, packing material acts differently in each engine. We just do what we can to, to make sure that our packing material lasts as long as possible for the customer. Okay, that's our refurb, re-sleeve, repack for this week. Um, please subscribe to our channel if you can. Please like our page. Okay guys, see you next week.